Today I'm going to talk about what life is outside of the comfort zone. I'm uh, going to put it, in, put it across to you all in a relatable manner because uh, I've experienced it uh, in my own personal life and I thought um, I can put it across to you all uh, in a re relatable way through my, in my career. Uh, and I'm sure it'll, it'll probably hold you in good stead if, if you ever decide to step out of your own comfort zone. So I'm going to uh, take my life back to <coughs> 2008 uh, when I got dropped from the Indian team. Uh, this was after we won the World Cup, won uh, the Commonwealth Bank Series in, in Australia. We beat Australia in Australia, which was a massive deal at that point in time. Uh, came back, we played the Asia Cup, and after the Asia Cup, we lost in the finals against Sri Lanka, uh, and I got axed from the team. So uh, talking about my childhood a little bit here, uh, I come from a family where like a lot of families in our country, we, don't, we didn't necessarily have a great family life. So my mom and dad had a very difficult marriage. And because of that marriage, it had a lot of implications on my sister and me. So uh, even though I made it to the international scene, played cricket pretty well, when I got dropped from the Indian team in 2008, I decided I'm going to spend some time uh, and energy uh, to fix their, or help in fixing their marriage because uh, they were always dependent on my sister and I to, to kind of help them out uh, in whatever situation that they went through. So I thought maybe three or four months and then get, I'll get back to my game because it was the off season at that point in time. Uh, what happened was fast forward five years and this is how I looked. So I thought three or four months and before I knew it, four years had gone away because I was living in a very toxic environment which didn't serve me, which didn't serve uh, the sport and career I was pursuing. And I ended up becoming a very frustrated, dejected, um, and a very unhappy individual. So much so that I saw my progress in the failure of my teammates in performances. And uh, in spite of being the second highest earning IPL player at the time in 2010, I was extremely unhappy. So what happened was, uh, when I got to that place uh, in 2010, 2011, 12, I reached a place where I couldn't look at myself in the mirror because I had to be honest with myself. And uh, uh, I didn't like the person I was seeing. I was going through depression. I was upset. I was frustrated. And uh, a little suicidal as well, let me be honest. And that's when I decided that I either should end my life or do something else with it. I didn't want to play cricket in spite of being, you know, second highest earning IPL player at the time. I didn't want anything to do with a game that I loved because I despised who I'd become. And what happened at that point was uh, I decided to speak to the only person I trusted, uh, my best friend at the time, my wife today. Uh, I decided to speak to her. So when I spoke to her about it, I told her that uh, I either want to give up on life or I want to restart my life in some corner of the world, start from scratch because I can't live like this anymore. I can't live with who I've become over the last few years and I don't think I'll make it back into the international scene and it hurts me deeply that uh, I love something so much and I, I made it my profession but I'm not able to pursue it anymore. So the one thing she said to me was, let's do a thing. You want to quit the game? Quit the game. but." if you can defer your decision by six months. So I said, why? And the sh what she said to me was, for the next six months, just play cricket simply because you love the game. For no other reason. Don't compete, don't be in the rat race, don't try to get into the Indian team, don't do anything. Just play the game simply because you loved it. And uh, so I said, sure, that's easy. I, I can do that. I, I thought six more months, another IPL, I'll earn some more money and get out of the country. And um, the next thing she said was, if there's one thing you want to change about yourself, Rob, what would it be? I said, have you met Robin? You know, that was 1st of Jan 2012, guys. I looked like that. I was 26 years old. I looked 40 years old. I weighed almost 100 kilos. And I was extremely unhappy. I, I tried to find solace in different avenues. Uh, but honestly, deep within, I wasn't happy. So she said, let's fix that. Let's, let's help you lose weight. She put me on to a nutritionist. She was competing and playing tennis back then. 
So I went to her nutritionist. I slowly started losing weight. And the first tournament I played after, the, uh, after that, I played five games of uh, Vijay Hazari. That's one day domestic cricket. And in those five games, I scored 200s, 350s, simply because I just played for the love of the game. I started feeling really good about myself. I really enjoyed playing the game just for the love of it. I started doing well. I went on to play the IPL, which is, which is uh, subsequently the next tournament I was going to play. I ended up being the top 10 run getters in, in the IPL, in that IPL. And that's when I rediscovered my passion for the game. And I felt like, man, I love what I'm doing. I love where I am. I want to do really well. And somewhere, the flame was reignited to play for the country again. And to my luck and happenstance, I met Praveen Amre, who was the, the batting coach of our, of our team. I, was used, I used to play for Pune Warriors back then. So what I decided to do was I told Sir my, my uh, desire to play for the country again. And he said, Robin, you can do it. If you want to do it, you can do it. Cut to, the, uh, cut to after the IPL, I was on a break in Spain. And I remember I was standing in the bus stand and I called Praveen Sir up from there. I told him, Sir, I want to I work with you one-on-one, -on -one, just as, as, a, as my personal batting coach. And let me tell you guys, this was unheard of in cricket. You know, you have personal coaches in individual sport, you never have personal coaches in, in, a, in a team sport. And when I broke that barrier of, of hiring someone on a professional basis, um, I was mocked uh, in public. You know, this, like, this guy is done and dusted, he's not playing cricket competitively for the, for the, for the country, why does he want uh, a batting coach? That's when I decided that I'm going to push myself out of my comfort zone. There was a gap in my batting technique that I want to change. I want to close that gap because I want to play test cricket for India. I want to play international cricket again. So I said I want to close that gap and become the best batsman I can be. So I, I said, so I said, why not? Let's work together. So I was working with Sir. And uh, one of the first things I actually experienced uh, out of my comfort zone was extreme difficulty mentally and emotionally. I struggled a lot mentally and emotionally because I'm sure a lot of you all can understand there are certain ways we do something. For example, the way we write, you know, the way we hold a scalpel in, in your profession, you know, uh, something that's very natural to us. And we've done it for, 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 for years together. And I played cricket from the age of seven. So I had a very set batting technique, you know, something that but I held the bat a certain way, I stood a certain way, I approached batting a certain way. And Sir said, we're going to change all of that. We're going to make you a brand new player. And he said, it's going to be extremely hard. And are you willing to do it? I said, Sir, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I trust you, let's do this. And that's what he said. One of the, one of the key things that I, I had to do was trust him completely. Trust that process completely. The first thing I experienced outside of the comfort zone was emotional and mental struggles. It was extremely, extremely hard. There were sessions that I would stop, Praveen Sir and I would stop sessions simply because I couldn't go on anymore. I was in tears. I'd be crying. You know, learning something new is easy, but unlearning something that you know is the most difficult part. When you unlearn something new and that transition phase when you've unlearned everything that you know and that defines you as a, as a person, as an as a athlete, as a, as a human being, and then you're trying to convert yourself into something else, make yourself a better version of you. That, that space in between is, ex is extremely hard. It's a space where you're alone. I, I probably will, won't be able to put into words uh, what I felt and experienced in that time. It was extremely, extremely real to me. I experienced, I experienced a lot of doubt. I had no confidence in myself whatsoever. All my confidence came from the words of my coach and my mind coach. I did subsequently hire a mind coach because I figured I need to fi fix something here as well. <laughs> so I was extremely weak as, as a human being at that point. So much so that I didn't want to play uh, the forthcoming season. I was not even ready. And I went to Praveen sir and I said, I don't want to play sir. I'm not ready. I can't do it. And he said, Robin, I know you probably are only 20 or 30% ready, but trust me, what, whatever you've got is good enough for you to score runs. I trusted him. I went into the season being 20% ready. That was a season where I played, if, like all of you all know how, 
how quickly I play when I bat, or what strike rates I play with. I batted with a strike rate of less than 50 in that domestic Ranji Trophy season. The first game of the season, I scored about 80 over 240, 250 balls. I have never played an innings like that. That was unheard of. And I, I didn't have the confidence to drive a ball, defend a ball. I didn't know what I was doing. Every time I defended a ball, I turned and looked at Sir, Sir would nod like this and I'd be like, okay, I've done that right. But I decided to go through that phase. And I believe there are three key necessities of going through that phase if you decide to step out of your comfort zone. There are three absolute necessities that you need. The first thing we need when we step out of our comfort zone is patience. Patience is absolutely integral. How am I going to be patient? How am I going to be patient, you ask? Especially when you're struggling and it's hard and every day is a struggle, you're crying every day and it's, you know, you feel like you don't know where to turn, you don't know what you've done with yourself, you're like, you're, you're second guessing yourself if, if you've made the right decision. That, those are things that I went through every single day during that phase. You need to have courage. That's a second necessity in that phase. That phase when you're going through, that little gap there, you need to be very courageous. You need to be brave to face every day, knowing that you will see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's extremely, extremely critical. And how do you, how do you know that you're going to see light at the end of the tunnel? That's the third necessity. You're going to have faith. Faith, again, is so important in this time. Faith in yourself, faith in God, faith in your master, your teacher, faith in the process, whatever serves you, have faith and hold on to that faith because that will hold you good and will show you that light at the end of the tunnel. And I held on to these for dear life. For over a year I held on to it. So I went from that picture to the next one in a year. It was definitely hard, but it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. Because from there, because I sustained my patience, I sustained my courage, I sustained my faith in the process and my faith in God. In that season, I scored 720 runs for in, at Ranji Trophy level, the highest for, for, for Karnataka. The Vijay Hazare, that's the domestic one-day tournament, I top scored in the country. I went on a, again be the top 10 run getters in the IPL that the following season. Cut to the next season, I played a very integral role in Karnataka winning the Ranji Trophy after 25 or 30 years. I again top scored the Vijay Hazare in the entire country. And then I became the highest run scorer in the IPL and won the orange cap. The second guy to do it after Sachin Tendulkar. And the best part of it all, we won the championship. No Indian's ever done that. To win an orange cap and the IPL in the same year. What I'm really trying to tell you all is that stepping out of the comfort zone has been the best decision I have made in my life. It must, it's hard. It makes you struggle. It brings you to your knees. It makes you drag your feet. You cry. You weep. You whimper. But if you sustain that, if, you go, if you're willing to be brave and have the will to go through that hardship, what will come out is this. And what I have learned personally is that over a period of time, I enjoy stepping out of my comfort zone. Today, I challenge myself from time to time. I go through physical transformations because I have a slow metabolism, so I make sure that I, I challenge myself in that sense because every time I step out of the comfort zone, what I encounter at the back end of it is growth. The light at the end of the tunnel for me is growth. And that, I'm telling you, is the best feeling. You don't grow as a human being. You're, you, you actually experience who you are deep within your soul. And I would love and I would encourage all of you here to truly push yourself outside of your comfort zone because there's something magical waiting for you there. Your real true self, who you actually are born to be. And that lies only outside of the comfort zone. Today, after challenging myself and pushing myself out of the comfort zone, this is where I am. I have a little, little son, and a wonderful wife, and a wonderful family who I'm extremely grateful for, who challenge me, who accept me, and help me push boundaries. And, you know, this is where I am. Uh, to, be, to stand here and to be able to talk to you all and share with you all a small part of my journey. I did subsequently come back and play for the country. I made a comeback. And I still will make a comeback because that's all the part of the process, you know? <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to say, all of you all are young. 
all of you all have the choice to step out of your zones, to step out of your comfort zone, to step out of your own box and do something. Like a lot of these innovators here today who came and spoke before me, who performed before, before I did, who we heard speaking on, on, on the video before, before I, I spoke here today, I think all of these people have stepped out of their box in unique and, and intelligent ways. And I'm sure and I'm very certain it could be a personal life, it could be a professional life. There is room for improvement every single day. You've got to find what you want to improve and be willing to be courageous enough and have the will to step out of your, step out of your comfort zone because there you will encounter growth. Thank you very much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure.